Alright, so we're going to start by talking about the real number system. This is section one of your notes. There are a lot of definitions at the beginning. The only one we're going to go through on here, though, are rational numbers. And rational numbers, one way to think of their definition is any number that can be written as a fraction, which includes integers, repeating decimals, and decimals that end. This integers, that's something that's in your book. You're going to have to read the definition of that. So some examples. Negative 5. And that's because negative 5 can be written as negative 5 over 1. Now it's a fraction. <coughs> and so it's a rational number. 3 fifths is already written as a fraction. 0 0.45 repeating. This would be considered a repeating decimal. It is also a rational number. And then a decimal that ends means it's a decimal that has a definite ending point. It ends right here, does not go any farther. It's a rational number. So now, given this set, we're going to list which ones are each of these categories. So starting with natural numbers, these are your counting numbers, and so they're just, in our case, it's just going to be seven. Whole numbers are the natural numbers plus zero. So we'll have zero and seven. Integers are the negative and positive natural numbers plus zero. So in our case, we'll have negative two, 0 and 7. Rational numbers are what we had up just above, so this is going to be everything except that root 7. Notice with 1.5 in particular, this 1.5 can be written as 1 and a half, which is 3 halves, so you can write that as a fraction. Irrational numbers are any numbers that are not rational. So all that's left is root 7. And then all of these are considered real numbers. Real numbers are all the rational and irrational numbers. Once again, the definition of all of these is in your textbook, and so you do need to be reading that as well. All right, so now some inequalities. This first one. That is not equal to, an example, 5 is not equal to negative 5. They are not the same number. Next up, is less than, 6 is less than 10. Next up, is greater than, an example would be 3 is greater than negative 5. What is the difference between these two? is you always want to eat the larger number. Notice in this case, it's open towards the larger number, and then this one is also the larger number. So when you read it across, we have six is less than 10, because six is less than 10. Here, three is greater than negative five. So you always want to think of it as opening towards the larger number. The next one is, is less than or equal to. So this can be like two is less than or equal to seven. So two is less than seven, so we're okay. But also, we have the equal sign here. So five is less than or equal to five. You can use it there as well. Same idea for is greater than or equal to. It works for the equal or it can also be the greater than. This last one is approximately equal to. So this is going to be when you're rounding or close. For example, pi is approximately 1415. We can use that approximation when dealing with it. So when we graph inequalities, we start with drawing a number line. Since we'll want negative 3, let's go ahead and put that in the middle. 
And notice we want all the values of x that are larger or equal to negative 3. So because that negative 3 is included, we'll use a bracket. And then we want all the numbers that are bigger or larger than that, which are to the right. And then for the second one, once again, we need a number line. Notice this time we want the numbers that are less than 6, but 6 is not included, so we'll use a parenthesis and we want all the numbers less than 6. When we talk about inequalities, we usually have set notation and interval notation, and that's how we write our answers. So first we need to do set notation. This is what it looks like. This first part just means the set of all x such that, and then whatever is right here will be the inequality or the rule that we're using. Interval notation is the other one that we use a lot. And I'm going to start with these in two inside. So first off, the first number is the smallest value that our variable can be. The second number is the largest value of that variable. And now the bracket and the parentheses will use brackets if that endpoint is included in our answer, if the variable can equal that number. And we'll use parentheses if it's not included or if the variable can't be that endpoint. So, so if we go back to the screen you were just on, if we look at each of these, if we do this first one with set notation, we have x such that, and we want all the values where x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And then in interval notation, we would write it, Notice our low point here is this 3. That 3 is included. X can be negative 3. But notice there's no endpoint. This keeps going forever, so it goes up to infinity. And infinity is not a number, it's an idea, so you can't ever actually hit infinity or equal infinity, so we use the open parenthesis. Similarly, on the second one, if we wanted to do set notation, we have the set m, because that's our variable. And notice now we have that m is less than 6, so all the values such that m is less than 6. In interval notation, notice this time we don't have a lower bound because it keeps going on forever. So what we'll have from negative infinity, but our high bound is 6, because notice we stop here. 6 is not included, so we use our parentheses. So now we're going to put this all together. So given the inequality, we're going to graph them and then write our answers in set notation and interval notation. So this first one, once again, you got to get your number line. And so we want all the values where x is greater than or equal to 1. So we'll have it at 1 and everything bigger. So our set notation will just be x such that x is greater than or equal to 1. Interval notation, our low points 1, we're going up to infinity. On this second one, once again we start with our number line. This time we want all the values that are less than negative 3, so we'll use a parenthesis because it's not equal to. Set notation, once again we want x such that x is less than negative 3, so any value of x as long as it's less than negative 3. Interval notation, we're coming all the way down to negative infinity, but only going up to negative 3. This last one, once again, we draw our number line. And notice, even though the variable's on the right side this time, we want all the values 
where a is less than or equal to zero. We need zero to be the biggest. So because that equals a bracket, and then since zero is the largest, we go to the left. So in set notation, notice now we're using a, so a such that a is less than or equal to zero. And then interval notation, once again, we're going all the way down to negative infinity, but up to zero, and zero is included. Now, up, we're looking at absolute value. And one way to think about it is the distance that a number is from zero. Think about when you have distance, you cannot have negative numbers, because no matter which way you go, you always win somewhere. You're not going to go a negative distance. So first off, if we look at negative 20, that is still 20 units from zero. You still went 20. So our absolute value is 20. Next up, if we look at 5, from zero to 5, we still went 5 units, so it's 5. This last one is a little bit tricky, but let's focus on just this one first. This is still 12 units from zero. So the absolute value of negative 12 is 12, but then we still have this negative on the outside, and so it becomes negative 12. And so this is all for section 1-1.